today i will discuss about eclogite phases introduction mineral assemblages mode of occurrences and origin important reactions evidence for the formation of eclogites at very high pressure and lastly the conclusions now take up the next phases that is your eclogite phases introduction most eclogites are striking in appearance with coarse reddish brown garnet peripheroblast set in a fine to medium grained matrix of green oomphacite zeodite and diapsite chemically the eclogites correspond to basalts or gabbroic rocks the critical association is oomphacite pyroxene plus garnet oomphacite is a pyroxene containing greater amount of na2o and al2o3 and negligible amount of tio2 as correspond to the pyroxene of igneous rocks garnet is lime bearing almandine pyrope with 25 to 70% pyrope and 12 to 40% grassulorite beside these some eclogites contain kyanite anisotite rotile ilmenite etc feldspar is absent mineral assemblages on the basis of common as assemblages we can observe three types of eclogites group a eclogites contain oomphacite and garnet group p contain oomphacite garnet kyanite and group c contain oomphacite garnet anisotite if you will see the triangular acf diagram on a screen we can observe all the three category that is group a b and c on the basis of different tie lines that is oomphacite garnet oomphacite garnet kyanite and oomphacite garnet anisotite group p eclogites beside the assemblages of group a these may be contain primary hornblende and geosite that is epidote the hornblende is sodium alumina rich variety known as borosites the formula is na ca mg fe thrice al2 si7 al o22 os twice group c eclogites beside the assemblages of group a these contain primary glaucophin and epidote now the next module is mode of occurrences and origin the eclogites are usually encountered as bands or lenses in crystalline complexes belonging to the gaunlites or amphibolites or the glaucophin bearing cyst in some localities they appear to have been tectonically skewed into the country rocks a pair from these the eclogite also occur as inclusion in kimberlite and basalt or as a layers in ultramafic rocks like dunite and pedrotite eclogites thus occur in a wide range of environments eclogite zones as such cannot be mapped in metamorphic terrains as mentioned already the eclogites are rocks of gabbroic or basaltic composition in spite of the basaltic composition plagioclase occurred in eclogites ascola attributed the origin of eclogite to very high pressure which is now proved by modern experimental work the transformation of gabbro to eclogites may be shown by the reaction 
disregarding a few components reaction laboratorite plus diapside plus olvin gave rise to umphacite plus garnet plus SiO2. The labradorite the usually we consider the composition that is NaAl Si3 O8 plus CaAl2 Si2 O8 plus diapside 6 Ca Mg Si2 O6 plus olvin Mg2 Si O4 give rise to umphacite and umphacite is a complex compound that is diapside plus zedite that is Ca Mg Si2 O6 plus NaAl Si2 O6 plus garnet Ca Mg2 Al2 Si3 O12 and plus SiO2. The overall reaction is labradorite plus diapside plus olvin give rise to omphacite plus garnet plus SiO2. The evidence of formation of eclogites at very high pressure are shown by first their high specific gravity above 3.59 centimeter cube as compared to about 3.09 per centimeter cube of gabbro. Second, the presence of kyanite and zedite pyroxenes which are usually present at very high pressure. Third, absence of plagioclase. Fourth, occurrences, oblique appearance of diamond in group A eclogites. The detailed work of Ringwood and Green 1966 67 72 demonstrate that temperature nearly 1200 to 1000 degree centigrade respectively to transfer a quartz bearing basalt to eclogites. Extrapolation of this curve to 600 degree centigrade or below suggest pressure of 10 kilobar or less. Some eclogites therefore originated under very high pressure and temperature underneath the earth crust and are incorporated as inclusion in kimberlite, basalt and ultramafic rocks other may originate within the lower part of the crust that is those associated with amphibolites, green cyst and glaucophin bearing cyst. In the later association, the eclogites are products of water free environments while amphibolite, green cyst, etc. are formed in water bearing condition. Thus, it is evident that eclogite can be formed from basic igneous rocks under a very wide temperature range when the pressure surface a minimum value around 8 to 10 kilobar at a moderate temperature. It is important to note that H2O must be absent if hornblende free eclogite is to be originated and only a slight amount of water may be present during the formation of amphiboles bearing eclogites belonging to the group B and C otherwise eclogite will be completely transferred to amphiboles bearing rocks. This accounts for relative scarcity of eclogites compared to other metamorphic rocks of basaltic composition. Eclogites are mainly occur as a lances or a squeeze body because they are very prone to alteration. Normally they react with water and change into green cyst or amphibolite phases. That is why in nature we cannot observe eclogite or we cannot observe very frequently as a mappable body of eclogites. Use eclogites is also associated with kimberlite. Usually 
it is a part of igneous as well as metamorphic because eclogites contain also the kyanite, the kyanite, omphacite, parop bearing eclogites that is also a type A eclogite which is formed at very high pressure and temperature without any OH bearing minerals. These are usually associated with kimberlite because they intruded forcefully at the surface without any change. They also carry the diamond, micro diamonds, especially the pyrope is a variety also present within pyrope. We can see the micro diamonds as compared to others. Now, the new terms is applicable that is ultra high pressure metamorphism and ultra high temperature metamorphism. The ultra high pressure metamorphism where we can observe the diamonds and usually they are also associated with ultramafic igneous rocks or with eclogites. Mainly we can see how the association usually occur on the basis of that we can see if we will see the mineralogical part then usually the umphacite which is a complex mixture of your diapsite plus jadeite is a clinopyroxene variety and umphacite is an important mineral basically for eclogites on the basis of umphacite, garnet if present and plagioclase is absent, we can easily recognize in field that is eclogites. If suppose you will see the Indian examples, the Ladakh ophiolite is very important. Even in Rajasthan also, we can see the Fulad ophiolites belt where we can see the ultramafic igneous rocks. And in Orisha also, we can observe the different ultramafic rocks. And if suppose we will see the Andhra Pradesh area, that is Vazkarur area, where we can see the kimberlites. And with these kimberlites, we can observe the eclogites. Conclusion, in this modules, we have discussed about the blue cyst phases, that is glaucophin lawsonite phases and eclogite phases in detail. We have covered the characteristic minerals, physical condition of metamorphism and mineral paragenesis with the help of ACF and AKF diagram, especially for blue cyst phases. And for eclogite phases, we have covered the characteristic minerals, different type of eclogites, origin and mode of occurrences of eclogites, and the experimental support for the formation of eclogites, especially how the quartz basalt change into eclogites at a specific pressure and temperature condition, the experimental work carried out by Green and Ringwood. On the basis of these studies, we can say that they belong to very high pressure as classified by Mayashiro phases series. Now, the new terms that is ultra high pressure, 
ultra high temperature metamorphism is introduced within one decade and where we can observe how the high pressure ultra high pressure metamorphism and ultra high temperature metamorphism occur and especially the eclogites comes under ultra high pressure metamorphism. <laughs>